Yeah, we're not always going to agree on everything, but I think we agree on the big things and on the values that are driving us and the conversations that we have around how to best get there, just a reflection of the, the diversity of the country and the way we're going to do it. So thank you for all your, uh, your leadership and thank you to the Canadian Labour Congress uh, for the invitation today. It, it is a real pleasure to be here, especially on Budget Week, where we just laid out our plan for a better future that's focused on fairness for every generation. And that's specifically focusing course on making sure that people can get into the middle class, people can actually see themselves succeed. We have too many young people, millennials and Gen Zs. As I get older, I realize that young people, there's anyone 45 and under now. Uh, and, and it is yeah, because those are the, that's the like crowd the you have screwed over. stacked a little bit against them right now. Uh, and that's why uh, that focus on fairness was at the heart of our, uh, our budget. But it's also been at the heart of the work we've been doing over the past eight years. Um, I want to start by giving a shout out to all the leaders uh, and workers here today. Uh, thank you for everything you do every single day to make this country a better place, to make it the best country in the world. Uh, but knowing full well, as we all do as progressives, that there's a lot of work to make it even better uh, ahead of us, always. Workers are here for this country and our government will always be here for you. Our track record shows it. We've invested in health care because we know that better conditions of work lead to better conditions of care. We're investing in child care so people can save money, but also to make sure that early childhood educators get uh, better uh, supports, better resources, and better pay. We introduced the Sustainable Jobs Act, which, thanks to your support, has finally made it over to the Senate. And if there are any troubles over there, you can take it up with Hassan, because it's out of my hands now. <laughs> We restored the age of eligibility for OAS and GIS to 65 from the 67 that Stephen Harper had put it at. We ensured women and men in feder federally regulated workplaces uh, start getting equal pay for equal work. And when we renegotiated NAFTA, we added significant labor protections. Now, the Conservative leader likes to pretend he's there for workers, uh, but everything I just listed are all things that he would either cut a roll back. And he continues to show with his voting record, with his approach on things, regardless of the populist reach out that he's giving uh, to workers, um, that he hasn't changed in the 19 years he's been in Parliament in his continued stance against workers. Last fall, we introduced anti scab legislation to ban replacement workers because banning replacement workers is about free and fair bargaining. You cannot get to a good deal unless it's at the bargaining table, and that's what it's actually going to be. For me, it, it seems like such an obvious thing, uh, but I was reminded just last week as I sat down with the good folks at the Chamber of Commerce of this country when Perrin Beatty it leaned in and said, you really got to undo that uh, anti-scab legislation. And I'm like, Wow, there really are people who don't get it, uh, that don't get that you cannot build a strong economy unless you are empowering labor to stand up for the middle class and make sure that a good deal happens at the bargaining table. That's what we're standing for with that, and that's what we're always going to stand for alongside you. When we build opportunities for workers, it's good for the middle class and their families, and it's good for the economy as well, because our budget is all about building that. It's about a fair shot for success. Housing is one of the biggest challenges people are facing and taking a concrete and solid approach on investing ambitiously in housing is something that this government is absolutely doing. Uh, I, you know, once you've been in power for you know, eight plus years, it becomes harder and harder to blame the previous guys for, uh, for challenges you're facing. But you but still But housing do. is a long-term issue in this country. And the fact that for 10 years, the Conservative government, in which Pierre Polyev was actually housing minister... And he goes on to the blame The fact them. that they withdrew completely from housing and said actually explicitly that the federal government has nothing to do, should have nothing to do with affordable housing specifically, was just wrong and it's something we're playing catch up on ever since which is why we've been so incredibly ambitious with different measures out there uh, measures around uh, changing the way homes get built 
across the country in uh, municipalities across the country that are agreeing to be ambitious. There are some municipalities that didn't want to be that ambitious, uh, wouldn't take the investments we were ready as long as they pushed aside on the nimbyism, and that's quite fine. Those municipalities don't have to you know, increase density, don't have to accelerate their processes. We had more money left over for other uh, communities that we wanted to, that wanted to do even more. And that approach of being there to partner uh, with regions, with parts of the country that want to step up big time, uh, has served us really, really well. Yes, there are conservative premiers out there complaining that we're putting too many conditions and we're uh, forcing them to build more homes in ways that uh, they don't think they want to or their voters don't want to. But quite frankly, Canadians expect people to work together constructively across party lines. So then to get stop going done. around the and premiers indeed, and going right to the uh, when you know the city the government of Quebec uh, had concerns about our housing accelerator fund we said no no we'll work with you they actually doubled the investments that we were putting towards housing accelerator because the things that we wanted uh, for Quebec for for housing as conditions they were largely already doing. And BC, yeah, so not they only did we work really well with them on the housing accelerator, on lots of things that David Eby gov Eby's government was already doing, <sighs> they created a program called BC Builds uh, that is focused on building way more affordable housing for people. They put $2 billion towards it. We said, we like this program so much, we'll put $2 billion of our own money towards the BC Builds program. And on top of that, we said, okay, now we're creating Canada Builds, where any province that wants to step up the way BC did with a program like this, we'll put that money forward. Best because friend, David Eby. Housing challenge doesn't get solved unless everyone works together. And yes, it's orders of government, but it's also nonprofits, but it's also labor. It's also all of you as you're stepping up uh, for, uh, yes, for, for workers in that, uh, those industries and sectors, but also as you're advocating for a fairer Canada, as you're saying, no, no, nonprofits need to be able to build uh, more spaces. No, neighborhoods need to be more accessible uh, for the middle class. No, we need to work on this together to restore fairness for this country. That's what you have always stood for, and that's why we're going to continue to be there. We've continued to work with you and draw on continue, uh, the great continue, ideas you have. Continue, uh, continue, continue. Whether it was uh, on the National oh, School Lord. Food Program, uh, I was glad, glad to be able to launch that because teachers have been pushing for that right across the country and the federal government stepped up so we're going to see 400,000 more kids. Watch the next thing's going to be he's going to continue school with a with a full belly. Uh, I remember from my time as a teacher as a proud member of the BCTF uh, that that was a really important thing to make sure that kids had full bellies as they were in schools. We're going to continue drama investing teachers. in workers, investing yeah, in people, we're going to continue in our to collective future. And we're doing this in a fiscally responsible way. Canada is the third largest economy in the world with a triple A credit rating. We uh, have the lowest but deficit. We're not the third the largest economy in the, the world. The lowest debt to GDP ratio. The size of our debt as a proportion of our GDP is lower than any other G7 country and on a track to continue even lower, including with all the investments we're making. And there is a fundamental choice that has to be made about how we build a better future. Now, conservatives would have you pull back not spend anything, maybe pay down a little bet, de a debt to balance the budget at all costs and expect the economy to sort it out itself. Yeah, well, it's a I free disagree. market. I believe that investing intelligently in communities, in people, in you workers, believe in, in projects, uh, in things that are going to make this country getting involved in private prosper business. is what government should be doing. Yes, doing it in, re in a responsible way, and that's but what you're not we've been doing every step of the way. Um, and continue, including in this we're budget, continue to asking the wealthiest 0.1 percent to pay a little bit more by raising our capital gains uh, uh, rate, uh, inclusion rate, to a level that's still more generous than California and New York. So anyone asks you about innovation or killing investment in innovation, say, yeah, that's why California and New York have such low investment in innovation in their, uh, in their jurisdictions. Uh, asking the wealthiest 1% to pay a little bit more to make sure that young California people can see themselves buying a home in a few years, to make sure that we have dental care 
right across the country for seniors to make sure that we're delivering prescription uh, contraceptives for free to young women who need the options of family planning, to deliver free diabetes medication to people right across the country so that we avoid those consequences. That's the role of a government. A government shouldn't do everything, but it should be there as a partner in people's success and there to make sure that the system is fair for everyone. The government's that job is to build roads, airports. Of, of course, because infrastructure, we're asking man. the ultra-wealthy to pay job. a little more, the Conservatives have already come out and said they're voting against this budget. No big surprise there. They have always demonstrated a belief in trickle-down theory, and Pierre Polyev has been uh, at the heart of that every step of the way. Um, so doing that uh, and staying focused on how we work together to grow the middle class, to make sure everyone has a real and fair chance to succeed, to make sure that Canada is fair for every generation, this is work that we can't do as a government without everything that you do in fighting for workers, fighting for hardworking Canadians, fighting for the communities they live in, and a better future for us all. This works as a partnership. It's something I knew back in 2015. It's something I'm excited uh, to continue to work with you on now in 2024, and something we're going to have to work hard to make sure Canadians continue to choose and value long into the future. Merci beaucoup, mes amis.